Boys Lines. As Boys Lines. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. You're listening to the As Bold As Lions podcast. Well, hello and welcome to the As Bold As Lions podcast. My name is Derek and it is so good to have you join me today. I am, um, as I'm recording this, we're just in the very beginning of March, I'd say maybe a month, uh, a third of the month uh, through or so. Um, and uh, as this publishes, we're, we'll be uh, about halfway through, I would say, um, trying to do the math here real quick and, and look at the calendar. But um, we are just rolling right through 2022. It seems like things are, are warming up steadily where uh, I live in uh, Middle Tennessee and it's nice to see the the um, the grass starting to green up a little bit here, and just the the temps getting a little warmer. There's not necessarily frost on the windows when you come out to your car in the morning. So all those little things that just indicate that the the, the weather is changing a little bit, the seasons are are beginning to change, and um, I'm sure I'll be looking a little bit at uh, allergy issues here in a, in a few weeks as well as things start to bud and and uh, and pollen and all that uh, maybe you're someone who can um, empathize and sympathize with that a little bit as as the seasons seem to change there's always um, a little of that going on uh, at least in this area and at least for me personally but um, nothing that we can't suffer through a little bit and get through um, but hope you're, hope you're doing well and just wanted to thank you so much for tuning into these podcasts, whether you're a regular listener, somebody who, who usually tunes in from, from week to week, or you're just happened by, happened to pass by and, and thought, Hey, what's, what's this? We'll check this out. That's both those lines. That's kind of a, a weird title. So what's going on here? So maybe that's you. If so, we're, we're glad to have you join uh, on the podcast, the um, the last few weeks, I've had my wife Corey with me. And we've been going through a series that was titled "Profiles in Courage," just looking at different uh, Bible characters that uh, are important, I'd say, to to look at and and maybe model our faith after, if we can. Ultimately, we we model after Jesus and and what who he is and what he has done. But a lot that we can take away from uh, different folks that that have. Um, just testimonies of courage and testimonies of boldness in their lives. For today, I am just taking kind of a a one-off episode to go back to a a blog that posted um, over my website, DerekCharlesJohnson.com. And if you're um, somebody that's familiar with that, you probably know already you can get blogs and devotionals to your email inbox. Um, but I have been r- running a blog for about four or five years now, I guess since 2017. Uh, started out as a weekly blog. This year I tried to uh, make a shift in, in terms of just making it more of a concentrated monthly blog that I send out and then still doing uh, podcasts pretty much uh, on, the, on the regular with a weekly episode. And so I wanted to, before I got too far into March, wanted to go back and capture that, that blog that was, um, that had posted for, for this month and, and kind of just dive into it for the podcast. Just thinking there's some things that are applicable right now. There's, there's a lot going on in the world right now and a lot that we try to wrap our minds around as Christians and, and grapple with, pray over. Um, and just try to, to make sense of. And so the title of this blog was A World on Fire. That's the, the title for today's podcast as well. And I think I just have felt like there's there's this need to just 
I, I'd say figure out what our response is to what is happening in the world as Christians. What are we called to do? What is what is Jesus calling us to do? And you know the the events over these past few years, a couple of years, if you want to go back that far, we could probably even go back further, but definitely the last two years and and things that just seem like they're accelerating um, in recent weeks, months, and weeks. Uh, and just a kind of a roller coaster of of things that we're we're seeing from one one to the next. Um, you know, we've had the pandemic, we've had racial tensions, we've had wars and impending wars and things like that, things overseas that have been conflicts. And it just seems like every every day you wake up or every week that comes around, there's just something new on the horizon that that we need to consider and especially in the day and age that we live in, the way information is shared and how quickly we can just know of what's happening somewhere that's thousands of miles away where, you know, 50 years ago or 100 years ago, the news of such things just took so much longer and and it wasn't instantaneous. But now we have just this this news cycle that's just nonstop that we, we kind of get swept up in and are always exposed to if, if we allow ourselves to be. And, um, sometimes it's, it's pretty much unavoidable to, to, to some extent. So again, I'm, as I sit and think about all that, and as I have time here and there to, to do that, you know, life, life moves fast, even with everything in chaos in this world. And, uh, my wife and I having five kids and just all their, weekly and daily activities and things that are going on, we, you don't always have time to, to sit, to sit and reflect, but I, I think it's important even as we open our Bibles and as we go to the Lord, that we have those moments where we're saying, how do, how do you want me to look at all this Jesus through, through your lens, through your eyes? Cause that's, that's where I want my perspective to be. It's easy to just, uh, out of my own flesh to respond to things, but I, I don't want to do that. And so with um with everything that's going on it seems to be biblical in nature not not to have any pun there but biblical type of things going on I feel like there's just all the more the the need to be dependent on the Lord the need to to have the proper perspective and to allow that to to influence the tone of my life the where I go how I interact with other people and how um we go through this time uh, together. So that was my goal with this blog and uh, with the podcast today is, is to look at that. Um, how we, do, how do we live as Christians in the midst of a world that is on fire and going further into decay each day? And so, you know, this, this is a big topic and I could probably do a, a series of, um, more, uh, give it more justice through a, a series of, of episodes and, and blogs and, and writings and such. But I felt like it's a, it's needed to say something at least for my own processing of things. And hopefully that is something that resonates with other people as you're looking at just everything happening and, and wondering how do we keep moving forward? How does, how do I live my life in Christ and, and, and stay grounded? And so, you know that that's my goal. I, I I want to leave you with some some anchor points to, to just kind of hold on to as and maybe they're just reminders, but they're they're still there to say yes. Um, that I need to see that and need to hear that. And I think to remind us as well that we're we're called to invest in each other. We're we're bearing witness to the truth and we're holding each other accountable um, as we see the day approaching. As it says in Hebrews ten twenty five. So uh, just a few kind of rapid fire points today, some, some things to, again, just to hold on to and, and maybe in your own devotional time or you're uh, listening to this in the car or wherever you're at, this is just something to kind of take with you into your own prayer time and, and to, to consider it. And, you know, that's, that's the reason why I blog. That's the reason why. I, I do the as bold as lines content. Um, even the reason that that pours over into music and songwriting, it's it's 
pointing us to Jesus. It's pointing us to him and, and always putting our focus back there because it's, it's so easy in the midst of this world to, to lose that focus, to kind of turn inward, uh, to shut down. I know that, that my own temptation at times, but to, to keep pulling each other along and say, let's go, let's keep being bold. Let's keep, um, the gospel first and foremost, despite everything else that we're seeing. So, Really long introduction to, to kind of set up where we're going today, but these these points are pretty short. And um, again, I hope this is a blessing to you. So my first point, talking about a world on fire, talking about everything that's going on, is to realize Jesus told us we would face trouble. John sixteen thirty three. I've said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Some of the most wonderful words in Scripture, if, if I'm honest, if I read the words of Jesus saying, Take heart, I have overcome the world. But in all this, I remind myself that Jesus says, Hey, you will face trouble. Um, I, there's this, this phrase I, I heard as a kid growing up, um, and maybe it was on a bumper sticker or T-shirts or whatever, but it said, Mama said there'd be days like this. Mama, Mama said... There would be uh, some some trying times, and I think if we can extend that even to Jesus, what He said, um, and furthermore, as Christians, He Jesus said there'd be hard times, there'd be hardships of various kinds. So I think we frame things within that context. We realize that this this is part of the process. This is part of life. This is part of what we are to endure, and He. He actually says expected to to get worse, you know, if he's 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 honest with us. At least Jesus doesn't sugarcoat things, right? He's not going to just feed you some fluff. He's he's like, "Hey, it's going to be hard." And if you go to Matthew 24, it's um it's one of those passages where he's unpacking a lot of this stuff. He's talking about end times, he's talking about what what you will experience and the trials and tribulations and things like that. He's saying these are like labor pains. And uh, it's it, the beginnings of all this is, is kind of the, the birthing of what's to come. But in all this, do we, do we look at what's going on and, and just kind of throw up our hands and be helpless and, and afraid of, of everything, you know, just hide under the rock somewhere? No. The rest of, of John sixteen thirty three that verse I just read, it's a promise. Take heart. I have overcome the world. When we see wars and, and rumors of wars, when we see uh, hey, this nation is plotting to go against that nation and this thing is going down, this this calamity, this famine, this pandemic, this plague, whatever you hear of on the news or on your social media, when you see all that, when you see persecution, take heart, Christ has overcome. And I think that is truly good news and it's very timely for us right now. So... John sixteen thirty three. that might be one of those verses to write on a note card, um, post-it note somewhere, and just have it everywhere you, you kind of look during the day, maybe in your car on the dashboard or in the bathroom on the mirror. Take heart, I have overcome the world. Second point is make a steady diet of God's word. Joshua 1, Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. You know, it seems obvious to me, but whenever my mind drifts and I start getting anxious over the world, I know that my focus on Jesus hasn't been enough. When I start to kind of drift off and, and, lose my grounding, I know pretty much right away, like, where's my time been in the Word? How much am I in prayer? Those types of things. And it's unfortunate, but uh, I realize this about myself. It takes me a long time. I'm 40 plus years old, but I'm finally starting to get it. I'm in kind of the cyclical pattern, say that, cyclical pattern of life. And, and maybe you can relate. I'm, I'm in the Word. I'm growing in God. Um, he's showing me things. It's great. Then life starts to get kind of busy. 
And for whatever reason, I kind of start pulling away from his presence, not spending as much time as I typically do. Then it gets busier and things just start to cause my anxiety and stress level to go up. And maybe then I start worrying about things like my health or money or my family, all those types of things. And then finally, I just cry out to the Lord and, and just say, save me. Jesus, save me. And in some shape or form, you know, and that, that's a little bit just exaggerated, but it seems like life kind of goes that way. And it happens over and over. And the thing about that is that I, I hate that that happens. I hate that that's kind of the way it goes. And I look at ancient Israel in the Old Testament, and it's, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a mirroring of what their patterns of, of faith and dependence would be. And my, my hope and my heart is to say, I want consistent faith. I want to, I want to trust, you know, and, and I think when I, when I do that, there's, there's some byproducts that come. When we, when we consistently get in the word, when we're consistently in prayer, when we're, when we're growing in, in God and, and not allowing those, those wandering periods to set in, we, we experience favor and blessing. I'm not saying that's what we're after, but those are some of the byproducts that come as a result. And one thing we have to remind ourselves as well is we, we may say, well, the byproduct, I'm worried about money, so hopefully money comes. Or I'm, I'm stressed out about my health, so hopefully healing comes. Well, maybe, but it has to be God's blessing in His way and His timing. Sometimes favor is just a peaceful environment in your home, and I, I will take that. Um, sometimes it's an opportunity to do ministry in a place where you haven't been able to before where you're, you're able to sow some new seeds in a new place or a new environment. Um, but whatever it is, favor is, is up to the Lord and it's in his timing. And I think it comes as we continue to stay in his presence and we, we don't ride those ebbs and flows, um, of our spiritual journey. And when I am steady in season and out, my mind relies less upon me and more upon the Lord. And get this, I have greater peace. And when I'm looking at a world on fire, that gives me the means to, to just look upward and to keep grounded. So our second point there, make a steady diet of God's word. It helps. It, it's, it's, I can't over, overstate it. Third point, be aware of the enemy's tactics. First Peter 5, 8, uh, a pretty famous verse here. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So along with this need to be consistent in my walk, I also must be vigilant. The devil is at work at all times, and he knows my weaknesses. He knows my pressure points. He knows the areas where I'm weak and I can easily fall astray, fall into temptation, and as Christians, we we're living through times of great evil. It's it, we don't have to look very far. We don't have to wander off and, and find it. It's it's right at our doorstep. And even within the church, there are many who are falling victim to the schemes of darkness. Being watchful means looking for areas where Satan would love to gain a foothold. Is it in your marriage? Is it in your home? Is it your job? I believe these are days in which temptations are all around us, and we can be tempted to, to take some shortcuts and find just easier paths because we realize how hard life is right now, and we just want to be able to survive, and we want to figure out how to get to kind of the next, the next step because we're all in survival mode, it seems. But when we resist the devil... The Bible says, and again, this is another promise, the Bible says he will flee. When you choose the, the not-so-easy route on a regular basis, when you do that every day, when you're consistent in the Word, the enemy realizes he can't just trip you up with the things that he used to be able to. The things you used to just fall so easily for, he's like, man, it's not working anymore. His goal is to destroy you. Let's not mince words what his goal is. Peter is, is, is clear about it. He's prowling around. He 
wants to devour you. He wants to destroy your witness. And he knows that in these times, the gospel is so vital. It's, it's this message that runs counter to everything else that's out there, and he wants to suppress it, he wants to stifle it, and he wants to make your life of no importance for the gospel. And he will do whatever thing he can to take you out of the game. We've got targets on our back. We have to realize that he, he's after us. And I think that's okay to, to, to just be aware of that as we think about the world being on fire and all that's going on, that we can't avoid the fray that there's, there's going to be attempts on the enemy, by the enemy to take us out, but we keep moving forward. We keep holding each other accountable. We keep pressing in and pressing on. Our calling is great and our reward will be worth it. Final point, uh, four points today. The final point is to walk in victory and authority. Just kind of continuing on in this, this thought process here. First Peter 2, verse 9, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So just adding this one last point to all this, I think we have to remind ourselves again of who we are in Christ. And this verse spells it out. We're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own possession. When we kind of get caught up in what's going on in the world and and we start to get kind of afraid of, of everything ourselves, I think it's because we don't understand our own identity because we're, we're living in Christ, and, and that makes us completely different than who we once were. When we are affirmed in Him, we walk in victory. We walk in authority. And truly, at that point, what is there that can shake us? Even if we are physically to lose our lives, our spiritual bodies are going to be raised with Him. We are guaranteed eternity with Jesus. And if I hold on to that hope and, and grab tightly onto that and less onto this world, I find that my mind is not rattled by day-to-day things. Again, talking about that peace, getting into to the Word, um, being reminded of the authority and the identity that I have in the Lord, as I just keep pouring that, self, that over my, my, my thoughts and, and my words each day, my actions, I'm finding peace. I'm finding peace in the middle of the storm. I'm... I'm The the whole world can be on fire, but I have this peace, and people are going to be drawn to that. You know, bad headlines and doom and gloom for the rest of the world doesn't shake the believer in Christ. Our worth is in Him. Our value is in Him. And out of that calling comes purpose. Out of that identity comes purpose and calling. We have to take that message and then say, "Who, who am I meant to speak boldly? To today on this truth? Who needs to hear this? And then to stand on that authority that you have been given. Be as bold as lions, because that is the power you have. It's granted through Jesus and the Holy Spirit living inside of you. So understand your identity, walk in authority, be aware of what's, what the enemy's tactics are, make a steady diet of God's word, and simply just realize that, that Jesus said we'd face trouble. And um, and know that he's still in control. You know, as I I put a message out there, whether it's a a blog that I've written, a podcast um, that I've I've done, whenever something of this nature comes out, um, I expect that there's kind of an audience receiving it, and they're they're in one of two camps. So maybe you can identify here. Um, One part, you're, you're, this yes and amen the whole time. You're like, you're, you're receiving it. You're saying, yep, I get it. I'm, I'm doing a lot of this already. This is, these are good reminders. This is, um, blessing and encouraging me. And, you know, I'm, I'm just going to keep living it because that's, that's what I need to hear. And I, I agree with all of it. And for, for that camp, I just say, Hey, be blessed. I, I'm, I'm glad that we're on the same page. I'm glad this is resonating with you. I'm glad I'm not just, you know, speaking into the echo chamber here. And finally, just to say, don't stop. Just keep telling people about the hope that you have. Live it out. Um, 
you're you're doing great. Let's let's keep going. Let's keep encouraging each other. So there's that camp, and then there's another part of the audience, and I don't know how big or small this is, depending on again who's stumbling upon these podcasts. Um, but I, you know, you may you may not have heard a lot of what I've just described. It may be kind of new for you, but you may come into this place hearing this and just your heart is beaten down. You're discouraged. You're looking at the world right now and, and you're, uh, you're, you're finding it's hard to find the will to keep going and, and, and make sense of everything. You know, you're hearing the truth here, hearing somebody with a similar message to this is one thing, but then taking it, living it out, acting upon it, you know, that's, that's where the rubber meets the road and that's where it's, it's tough sometimes. And you're in a, uh, an audience that you've looked at the last two years and you're just saying, how much, how much worse can it get? How, how much more am I going to suffer? You've had some, some blows, you know, maybe it's financial things, maybe it's health things, maybe it's losing a loved one, maybe, you know, just a job, whatever. And you, life is not going how you thought it would. To, to, People that are in this audience, I just want you to know that first and foremost, I'm praying for you. And I I cannot say whether or not things are going to improve, like, you know, instantly or where tomorrow's going to take us. Uh, I know Jesus is talking about things being bad and, and going from bad to worse, but I do know this. He is worth it. And if you haven't put your your faith and your hope in him and your trust, that's where you need to start again. That's where you need to come back to in all this. And and whether you've accepted Jesus and, and followed him or it's all new to you and you're just saying, who is Jesus? I want to know more. That's That's the step you need to take. And I can't take it for you, but I can encourage you to say, do it because at the end of the day, if, if all you have is Jesus, you have all you need. And whatever that means for you today, if, if there's more of a personal thing that you want to talk to me about and, and message me about, I get emails on a fairly regular basis, whether in, in terms of the blog or on the podcast or uh, things that I even put up on social media to say, reach out to me. How can I pray for you? Whatever. I I want to hear from people to to just say I'm praying for you and and I want to um, I want to encourage you. I think in Christ we have to do that. We have to keep looking after our fellow brothers and sisters and 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 keep pointing ourselves toward that north star, which is um, which is Jesus, which is that heavenly reward that we're after. And, you know, I, I, I think whatever we're facing in this world, we have to keep coming back to the, the idea and the notion and the, the hope that God is still in control. That as bad as it gets from, from one day to the, to the next, we, um, we, we keep letting our minds come back to that truth rather than just kind of spinning out on these things that are happening and, and questioning why and allowing our hearts to get kind of emotionally tied up into things. When, when Jesus is saying, take heart, I have overcome the world. Like, come back to me, come rest upon me. Let me reassure you because, you know, you're not going to find it anywhere else. You're going to search, um, you're going to search in vain to find hope and comfort and peace in other things when he's the only one that can give you those things. God is not letting our world turn aimlessly out of control. He is the one who spoke it all into existence. He is the one who created you. He created I, created me, and we can trust him. We can turn to him, and we can know that he hears us, and he is near. Again, I love you guys. Um, hope that this is a, an encouragement for you as we look at our world and try to make sense of things. These are, these are the things that I have to keep coming back to that I have to remind myself. So I don't think that I'm um, alone in the, in that type of thinking of, of just what do I need to do in order to keep moving forward in order to keep my faith um, secure? 
because there's a lot of shaking going on. As I talked about earlier, there's a lot of things happening in the church, even in the Christian circles. And we have to be aware of that. There's, there's false teachers. There's um, things coming up that are always trying to distract us. Satan's going to use everything he can to get our eyes off of Jesus and onto something else when we have to just put our eyes back on him. We have to, as that song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. That's something that we have to physically do and, and spiritually do and make the effort to, to um, make that switch. So, guys, it's been wonderful to, to just share this with you today. I'm closing with Ephesians 5, 15 through 17, as always. It seems so applicable to, to life uh, at any given moment. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. We will see you again soon. Hey guys, this is Derek Charles Johnson. You have been listening to the As Bold as Lions podcast. I am a blogger, a songwriter, an artist. And if you've been encouraged by this podcast, please go ahead and subscribe and share and head over to DerekCharlesJohnson.com for more encouraging content. God bless.